One, MetLife Stadium Drive. One of the two NFL stadiums shared by two teams. But we're not here to talk about that or that team across the hall. Keith Ippolito and John Rad are only here to talk about the true football giants. We talk giants football and wherever else the conversation may take us. So deal with it. This is the Shared Stadium Podcast. I didn't recognize this guy. Good for him for the weight loss. But he's been at the beach. It's time for a New York Giant. And I'd say one of the greats to retire. Because <laughs> you can't go back in the locker room after this. And who's had the better career? We're going to talk about all that and more here on the Shared Stadium Podcast. I'm John Rad, along with my tag team partner, Keith Ippolito. You're listening to the Shared Stadium Podcast, where we talk all things New York Giants, but we go all over the place. Because let's let's face it, there's really no football right now, but we're still going to talk a little bit of everything. But before we get into that, Ips, what's going on, brother? Doing good, man. No complaints at all. Uh, Like I was just saying before we hopped on here, I was helping my youngest brother move back uh, for the summer before he moves uh, down to Florida uh, from Charleston. So uh, I was just saying, you know, I'm I'm pushing forty out right now. So, uh, I was I was saying, you know, you only got one of these moves left in me, man. I don't know how much the body can take. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I I don't do uh moves i will hire the mover but i i'm too old to be doing that for pizza and beer nowadays so uh and unless it's a pizza hut big box me you know from our braves radio network days i i might do anything for one of those bad boys no i'm not i'm not helping anybody no 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 (laughs) because see here's the thing people forget it's all fun and games, so you got to carry a sofa down a flight of stairs or up a flight of stairs, and then it's like, oh, man, no, I'll hire somebody. I'm too old. College is... I'll, get, I'll, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll give you the I'll give you the hundred bucks to move next time. Yeah. <laughs> College is way in the rearview mirror for me, and it's going to stay back there. You know, speaking of things that's in the rearview mirror, uh, you know, the head man in charge. I can't even call him the big dog anymore because he's a little bit smaller. Brian Dable. Yeah. He's been, he's lost some weight and he's got Dude. a tan. I know, good. man. Good he you. looks, man, I honestly, like, I saw the picture of him and I was like, who is this guy? Who is that? De-? Like, did we hire a, a, a new coordinator or assistant coach? Or, who the hell yeah. is that for us over there? Good for him. He's looking good. He, he's dropped a few pounds. But look, it leads us into, you know, as as right now, OTAs are going on. And uh, he was talking about um, the question came up that everybody has on their mind. Daniel Jones. He's doing seven on seven drills. They haven't really turned him loose yet. But would you be terribly upset if he didn't make it to week one? If at week one, they just said, we want to be cautious. Let's give him one more week before we start letting somebody touch him. And he actually starts on week two. Are you upset about that? No, that wouldn't upset me. Uh, I mean, yeah, it wouldn't, up, it wouldn't upset me. I mean, I'd be okay going into um, going into week one with Drew Locke as the quarterback. I mean, I know it's only OTAs and... I heard he made some pretty good passes to neighbors and neighbors lit the show up at OTAs again. But like we've previously discussed, man, until you're actually, you know, putting the pads on and actually doing the real stuff, like what's it really matter at the end of the day? No, I I mean, no, I would I wouldn't be upset with that. Uh, And even like we've uh, previously discussed, man, uh, nothing uh, or I actually I heard that I was so I was listening to uh, WFAN in New York. I'm gonna give Sean Marasha credit. I heard this mention, or it was, or may, no, maybe it was Tiki. Actually, he was saying, you know, I feel like Daniel Jones might put us in a precarious situation, go like a bad situation going into the season where he's gonna force the Giants to make a decision if they want to bring him back after this year because he has a good season. 
And honestly, that would not surprise me based off of, you know, what he did coming out of that, you know, not get basically not getting extended uh, for that fifth year option. So, I, you know, it, it's it's the same thing, you know, with Jones. It's, uh, I, you know, we've had the same debate, you know, coming on five, six plus year, you know, with him. It's, you know, sometimes you even wonder is like, what, you know, we're still having this discussion, you know. Here's the ultimate question. I mean, so to answer my own question first, if they make him wait, I'm not mad at that. You open the season up against the Minnesota Vikings. So you're not talking about an NFC East team. And week two, you turn him loose against the uh, Washington Commanders. I'm not upset yeah. about that. I look at it like this with Daniel Jones. He's not a franchise quarterback. He's not. And, and to be fair, when you look at the landscape of the NFL right now, it's Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen. Like, it's Patrick Mahomes, and then there's a big yeah. gap there. And then you oh, start yeah. talking, you know, you start talking about the Josh Allen. You start talking about the uh, yeah. Cincinnati Bengals uh, yeah. quarterback. Yeah, uh, Joe Burrow, Lamar Joe Jackson. Burrow, Lamar Jackson, um, Tua Tungavailoa, uh, Jalen Hurts. Uh, Ertz and the it's, kid at, but it's uh, a wide, the, kid at it's the Chargers. A, it's a uh, Justin Herbert. It's a wide Herbert, gap yeah. that's there, but in that wide gap, Daniel Jones isn't in that next group. He's oh, yeah. He's arguably not even in the group after that. <laughs> you know there are rookies <laughs> that are coming into the NFL that, or or second year players that are coming into the NFL that I could easily make the argument he might be somewhere in that group right now. And so I don't think I don't agree that he's going to give us a hard decision because I think we're going to look around barring him literally taking us deep into the playoffs. I don't think just a one and done is going to be enough because I think if you look around, you're going, who else is going to look at him and say, he'll fit better in my system. Right, the foul, and, yeah. and I, I add to that, <clears throat> we talk about it. We're here in Atlanta. The Falcons possibly have their quarterback of the future. The Eagles have their quarterback. The Bengals have their quarterback. The Chiefs have their quarterback. The Texans have their quarterback. Yes. Heck, even the Detroit Lions have their quarterback. Where does he go? Who, unless, some, I mean, unless he's going across the hall to put on green because <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is hurt again or whatever, that's the best option for him. Or he goes down to a... a uh, Carolina, another yeah, quarterback. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they yeah, they need a lot. I mean, I'm sure there would be options, but yeah, I mean, like you said, man, I mean, he's not um man, it's so it's so frustrating sometimes cuz you see you see blitzes of the talent and I'll, I'm I'm not going to question his work ethic it, no. at least for me. I, it's it's just it's so frustrating sometimes. It, it's like Jekyll and Hyde, man. Um but you know, I, I'm I'm kind of I you know the more I think about it going into this season, I'm I'm kind of hopeful, man. Like uh, I'm I'm encouraged by what 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 what's happening on the offensive line, like especially with the the uh with the wide receivers, neighbors, and even um I'm sure you probably heard the cut earlier today, uh, Jalen Hyatt. Uh, Hyatt mm -hmm. after OTAs basically saying we're a playoff team. I, that makes me like him a lot more that he's thinking like that. But I don't think we're a playoff team. I, I mm -hmm. mean, I s s uh, uh, and uh, throw a little uh, a little gambling parlance. Like I saw some numbers earlier today, like Daniel Jones total touchdowns for the season, like nine and a half. I, I honestly, as a gambler, man, I. I'm inclined to take the over. Like I, I mean, yeah. I think he's a, at least good for ten touchdowns. Come on. Let me let me ask you this: Are you hopeful because the Giants sound and look like a dominating team, or are you hopeful because the other teams just aren't there yet? And that's why. I, and before you answer, that's why I say when I looked at Peyton Manning. 
And I know I'm talking about a great, but I'm being fair about this. Because remember, Peyton Manning didn't start off being the great Peyton Manning that we, we saw. He struggled. Oh, God, no. Oh, yeah. But when I looked at Peyton Manning, we knew, here's a guy who played in the SEC. He led Tennessee. He had those flashes of greatness. Right now with Daniel Jones, he played for Duke. Yes, and I am holding that against you because you played in the ACC. So yeah. you weren't exactly at a powerhouse team. And number no. B, I don't see flashes of greatness. I see flashes of serviceable to good. And that's not enough to get your team to the Super Bowl. If you were to tell me we're one play away, we're one player away, we're one running back away, and the Giants Super Bowl team, okay, then. I think we're a little bit more than that, but I think we're better. It's addition by subtraction, and that's because I think everything else, I think there are other teams that haven't gotten that much better yet, and I think the Giants just got better, but I don't think they got better because of the quarterback. Yeah, no, I I, I mean, I don't disagree with you on that. I mean, I, we've gotten much better in other positions. You know, like, again, we keep, I keep going back to the offensive line, obviously the draft with the wide receivers. And, hell, man, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm kind of excited to see what the backfield does, as the running backs do, uh, do man. Um, you know, um, uh, Singletary, he's... I'm not saying he's a Hall of Famer or he's going to, you know, you know, be Saquon Barkley or, you know, Christian McCaffrey or whatever. I'm not that crazy, but I think he's a serviceable veteran. Even uh, uh, the kid that, you know, Eric Gray or whatever, I think he could be OK. Uh, so I, I see things on the offensive uh, offensive side of the ball that I'm I'm encouraged about. And honestly, the mo the thing that. I feel like that is like the uh, the constant and that we haven't had in a very long time is I feel like we finally have a head coach who knows what he's doing. I'm very I'm very confident in what Dable's doing and even Shane. I, I mean, I just feel like, you know, I feel like I can trust him. You know, I, I mean, obviously, you know, last year was. It was what it was. There was all the, you know, the injuries and this and that. And but to rattle off the wins and have the team play like they did, you know, with you know Tommy DeVito and all that. I, I mean, I, yeah, I'm encouraged, man. And I, I see, I see some players on this team that like you, your favorite phrase, man. They got that dog in them, man. So I, I get, I'm, you know, I'm not delirious, and I'm not saying we're gonna win the Super Bowl or whatever, but. You know, I, I, I'm encur I'm encouraged, you know, again, I obviously like we keep going back to the biggest question is the quarterback. If, if we put it this way, I think if we had a quarterback who, who we knew week in and week out, wasn't going to lose us any games, I think we could be a playoff team. Do you? Here's what I will say. Number one, if. Yeah, if we had a quarterback, we had a surefire quarterback. We had someone that I knew, and I like to take take it old school. If we were on, on, on the football field playing two-hand touch in the street, and you line up 10 NFL quarterback, Daniel Jones wouldn't be my first pick. But I want to go back to something that you said real quick. Daniel Jones might not be here in two years, and here's why I'm going to tell you that. I'm looking at uh, this is according to Spotra. The Giants can get out from Daniel Jones at twenty at the end of 20, potential out twenty twenty yeah. two years, eighty eight million, but it's a twenty two million dollar dead cap hit. I will tell you why Daniel Jones won't be there. If Malik Neighbors pans out to be what we hope Malik Neighbors pans out to be, we're going to need the money to pay him. And oh you're yeah. You're gonna want to. You're gonna want to take that money, pay a Malik Neighbors, pay a running back, draft a quarterback, even if it's next year in this upcoming draft, the next draft. Yeah, yeah. Dra draft a young quarterback, let him sit for a year because we're going back to that again. I e Aaron Rodgers, I e Jordan Love, we're going back to that again, and let him sit for a year. Daniel Jones is out. 
And I, yeah. so I don't think, I think we're looking at the last couple of years of Daniel Jones because what have the Giants done? They've loaded up on wide receivers for a quarterback. Barring Daniel Jones having an Eli Manning Superman fourth quarter going deep into the playoffs, Daniel Jones, I think to me, and I'm not saying that to be negative. I'm saying that to be realistic of he, I, I never felt like he was the man in the beginning. I still don't feel yeah. like he's the man. I know well, he's coming I th- off I an injury. I think all of us were shocked when that pick was made <laughs> by um, uh, Dave. G- I, honestly, yeah, I remember when that pick was made by Gettle, and I was like, buddy, this is, uh, you better be on to something here, man. It's the <laughs> end of the world as yeah. we know it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think I look around and I'm like, look, I'm not knocking the guy. I And I've said it from the beginning. I'm doing no secret about it. I don't care. Daniel Jones ain't it. I think we're looking at the last couple of years of Daniel Jones, unless he puts together some serious numbers and then then we'll talk. But as it stands right now, you do another season like you did two years ago. See you, Danny. Speaking of people who could be leaving the New York Giants, I don't have a source. I don't think Keith has a source. I don't think we have any inside information on this, but I feel fairly confident it hasn't come out officially yet. Darren Wall is retiring. If he ain't retiring, he ain't coming back to New York. Uh, um, yeah, I, yeah. Where the hell? I... <laughs> I don't know where he's going after that music video. Good God. Um, so in the era of where music has, you know, it's always, it's not, it hasn't gone anywhere. You've had Kendrick Lamar come out with some music about Drake. You've had Drake uh-huh. come out with some music about Kendrick Lamar. Oh, You've had yeah. Darren Waller come out with a song about his soon-to-be ex-wife and NBA, uh, yeah. WNBA star, Kelsey oh, Plumlee. Yeah. You can't go back into a locker room after you put that song on. No, I will. I feel. I feel pretty. I feel feel pretty confident that he's retired. I mean, if there was any doubt, um, you know the uh, the the uh, the last few years of his career, the only thing, you know, not the talent. There was never any question of the talent. Obviously, it was always an injury thing because he hardly played last year, basically. So you're already injury, you're already injury prone. You're at the, you, you know, you put this music video broken. out. Yeah, yeah, and your heart, bro. Like, dude, yeah, woo, woo, God. <laughs> God. Can you imagine him going up against uh, an opposing team and just the amount of shit talking? is like, oh, bro. I, I, dude, it, it, uh, you wouldn't even have to try. It's just like, it's just sitting there. It's like easy, easy. Got him. Hey, look. I'd start singing to him. I'd start singing his own <laughs> song back to him. I would literally line up in front of him, and I would just start singing his own. I would, I would take the time, learn the lyrics to the song, and I would sing his own song back to him. If I'm across the line, so if you're a cornerback, if you, uh, matter of fact, I'm drawing a blank on the Falcons cornerback that they drafted. Oh yeah, dang yeah. Oh and, man, I know exactly. Yeah, dang. Yeah, I know up, exactly man. who you're talking about. But, um, yeah, yeah. If I'm lining up against Wallerman, like you said, I'm learning that verse by verse and just run in my mouth, dude. Uh, oh, oh my god, because it's it's so easy. The minute he it's... comes and lines up out there, AJ Terrell. If I'm yeah, AJ Terrell, AJ, yeah, yeah. The minute he comes up to the line, I, I don't even know the words to the song. I'm just gonna start singing it. I tell you. I'm just as, as loud as I can. I'm gonna oh, get yeah. him. And uh, if I'm AJ Terrell, if I'm any other team, I'm going to get a Kelsey uh, a Kelsey Plumley jersey, Kelsey Plumley, and I'm yeah. putting it under my uniform. So if I score Uniform. a touchdown, Down. I'm lifting Taking up. Taking it up. Boop. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I don't buddy. Good luck coming back from this one. I- I'm sad that your heart broken. I don't know what happened there. I-, I-, I feel I feel bad for you, but sorry, dude. Man. Honestly, man, sometimes I wonder as like, you know, sometimes there are, some things are best just not being talked about in public. But then you're going to talk about all this stuff and put it to a music or to a rap song? Come on, man. You, I thought I thought this guy was a, I thought this guy was a tech grad. Use you, your noodle a little bit, dude. 
Here, here's the even better one for you, though. What is the text messages? And what is the... Con I, I want to be a fly in the Las Vegas Aces locker room for a completely different set of reasons right now. I want to hear how they were talking about him. I don't. I'm not nothing sick or twisted. Oh. You pervert. No, I want to be in yeah. there when when Kelsey Plum. Yeah, walks you in. you you want to hear the you want to hear what yes. you want to hear the real talk. Yeah, like when one of her teammates is like, "Girl, Girl. what's up with dude? Well, yeah, well, are you are you what's happening here?" So, <laughs> speaking of players that aren't coming back. The great Aaron Donald. I can say great. I know a lot of people say, man, you throw that word around loosely. Aaron Donald's one of the greats. You don't like it. Go back and watch the film. Aaron oh, Donald's yeah. retiring. He will be in the Hall of Fame. First chance he gets. Um, outstanding player. But with Aaron Donald retiring, does it open the door for Dexter Lawrence to be one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL? Yes. A hundred percent, man. I mean, I, I, especially now that he Donald's out there. Uh, I mean, I can only imagine what this guy is gonna do. I, I, I am so, dude. I'm so excited about what this defense can do, especially with the addition of Burns. And uh, I mean, they paid, they paid him. You know, the salary basically says they expect him to be a star, and the way he's carrying himself. And all the and all even and with Dex with Dex, Fibs, man, I am so excited about this defense and what these guys can do. I would not be surprised to see Dexter Lawrence in that conversation at all. I I'm looking at this defense and once again, because I know everybody will say, How can he be a Giants fan? He was so down on Daniel Jones at the very beginning. But here's what I'll also say. Those the last two Super Bowls that the Giants have won, there was some serious defense being played there. And a large portion of that came from up front. Now, yep. Let's take a walk around the NFC East and let's just start there. I'm going to start at what I'd say is the bottom, and that's the Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott with CeeDee Lamb holding out, Dak Prescott's losing a weapon. Yeah. So now Dak Prescott has to run around. I like the defensive line's chance. I'll move over to the Washington Commanders. They, they're they still trying to figure it out. I'm sorry. You can't sit here and tell me this is a team that has put everything back together. This is a team that is, they're back in rebuild mode. Sorry. Yeah. And then I'm looking at the Philadelphia Eagles. They're the team to beat. Jalen Hurts can do wonders. Saquon Barkley, we know what he can do, but he's not going to be running the ball a lot. And if you can get Dexter Lawrence, Thibodeau, Brian Burns, putting some pressure on Jalen Hurts, and if you got uh, Nubbin, yep. and you got Dante Banks, yes. and Drew and Phillips are able to yeah, shut man. those wide receivers down, yeah. And I know it's easier said than done. It's basic football 101. But you know what's hard to do? When your quarterback's running around, throw the ball to an open man. And yes. as long as they can stay covered, that's where I start to look around and say, okay, now I feel better. Yeah. No, I, dude, I am I, – I honestly – I really – Maybe I'm getting a little too excited, but I am really excited to see what this defense can do, and especially all everything I'm hearing. Again, I know it's only OTAs, but these guys are all saying the right things. And man, I I am just ah, uh, dude, I'm I'm so excited to see what this what this guy can do, man. I, I God Almighty, man. I mean, he he's a he's a hell of a player, dude. I I mean. Trying, I was trying to look up um, uh, his numbers here, uh, but Who's I that, lost. Uh, Dexter Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to pull it up here. Oh God, I should. Last should've... season, Dexter Lawrence played sixteen yeah. games. He went for thirty-two solo tackles, twenty-one assisted. He had four point five sacks, seven tackles for loss, twenty-one QB hits. Yeah, I mean. Dude, I I mean, I have no I have no reason to doubt that this guy 
is uh, and especially what i uh, the coach the, the dc he's he, he seems like he's pushing him a little bit so yeah i, I would not be surprised to see him go out because uh, i could be wrong. How many playoff games has he played in? One. No. Two. Is it only? The is it two? The twenty. Yeah, yeah. Season. So he's got to be because he's what pushing thirty or close to it. Uh, he's got. He's got to be close 27. to twenty six. Okay. So yeah, I mean, so all right. I thought he was a little bit older than that. So yeah, I, I would think he. You know, he probably wants to get. You know. He's getting into the prime of his career. He's going to be hungry, man. He's going to want want some playoff games or whatever. And on top of that, you know, when I start looking at a guy that he came out in that 2019 draft, so you're talking about Nick Bosa, Quentin Williams, Quinlan Farrell. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, who, I'm forgetting somebody. Um. um uh, there's another edge rusher. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Um, I look it up. Uh, Christian Wilkinson. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You're talking about a guy that wants to be in those conversations, and you know who they took before him? I don't. I don't remember actually. But I would refresh me. Daniel Jones. Oh man. Dexter Lawrence was a second round pick. Daniel oh, Jones sexy, the, sexy. Well, I'm sorry. He wasn't the second round pick. He was the first round yeah, pick. Yeah, yeah. But he was number yeah, 17. Yeah. But they took Daniel Jones yeah, before him. Yeah. He was the first round. So, yeah. He's, he, he's, he's living up to the hype of being a first round pick. He's living up to it. And I think he he's going to do that. I hope he's going to do that. And I understand your excitement. And, and for anybody who's listening and watching, wherever you get your podcast, like, subscribe, follow, and do us the biggest favor you can do us. Tell a friend to tell a friend or friend. tell somebody who don't like us. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. And it's that time of year. It's that time to start getting excited because training camp will be here in what a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, it's it's not it's, it's right not up. far off. Yeah, it's not far off at all. I know that. It's right around. Yeah, it's the definitely. Court, so tra yeah, training camp's coming up, so it's that exciting time of year. Um, and, and it is just that where last year, you know, the excitement wasn't there. The excitement was there because. Yeah. We, you know, we knew we still had Saquon Barkley. We knew Daniel Jones was coming back. We made some outstanding additions at wide receivers. So now we've made some. I don't think we've gotten worse this year, and I don't think we've stayed no. the same. I think we've drastically improved. No, yeah, absolutely. No, I feel like we've made the right additions. Um, in you know, in free agency, I feel like we drafted well love i love our head coach i feel like we finally have a guy who knows what he's doing yeah man uh, again i'm not i don't i'm not i'm not delirious um but i you know i think we'll have i think we'll have a better much better season than last year considering it you know we all stay healthy uh, especially you know you know if jones basically just does enough to not lose us games yeah man i yeah i'm dude i'm very i'm expecting probably more definitely more than what the what vegas is expecting of us i know that here's what i'm hoping for i'm hoping by week 16 week 16 the falcons are 2 and 14 and the giants are Eight and seven, or eight and five. Yeah, whatever yeah. the number needs to be. And somebody will give me their tickets or sell me their tickets really cheap when they come to Atlanta. Or that, that's or I'm... may or or maybe they'll just feel generous and maybe they'll just throw you a bone. You never know, man. So I said that, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that the Falcons were week sixteen. Yeah, I'm hoping the Falcons are one and fifteen or you know one and one and fourteen. We're, uh, <laughs> we're 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 definitely going to that game. Well, you know that, yes. right? Yeah, that'll be here in the Mercedes Benz State. Now we got to make sure they got water. Okay. <laughs> For those of y'all who don't know, let, let's pull the curtain back. We, we said it. We're here in Atlanta. Atlanta had a. They didn't say they didn't have water. Atlanta had a boil water advisory. Okay? Yes. Now, 
What does that mean? And I can tell you what that means. I went to the Atlanta United game, the Atlanta United match uh, this past Sunday when the Boil Water Advisory came out. You were at the game, actually. I was there. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, that means no fountain drinks. So you're either drinking bottled water, bottled tea, or uh -huh. beer. That's it. Okay. You couldn't get it. Right. There's, there's no getting a Coca Cola. There's no getting a, a Sprite. What? Uh, what? What was your weapon of choice? Did you strict to a beer or an alcohol uh, diet only, or were uh, you going with the water and tea? What were you doing? I did bottled water. Um, okay. I have, that is only my second Atlanta United match I've ever been to. Okay. So I'm a big fan of experience. I wanted to take in the experience to learn the chants, you know, hey, hey. T. It's, 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 it's a fun it's game, a isn't it, man? Yeah. It's a vibe. So I wanted to take all of that in, and I really enjoyed myself. Um, so, you know, hopefully they'll have water so we won't have that problem. And number two, <laughs> even if they do have that problem and I can be in the in the building, I'll be there. Atlanta fans can get rowdy oh, and vicious yeah. and mean. And I'd like to have all my faculties about me just in case something <laughs> jumps off. <laughs> so, so. Did you uh did you also see the video uh floating around on um I believe it was Barstool or either Barstool or ATL Scoops of uh of the guy floating down uh, Petrie Street on the rubber ducky. Yeah, look, when in Atlanta, do what Atlanta does, and what's the most Atlanta? <laughs> Atlanta's gonna do what Atlanta does. So I'm, oh I'm, yeah, I'm gonna keep it above. Atla Atla Atlanta's the Wild West, man. So you know, let's give a, a pro tip um, for anybody who might be in New York or anywhere where you're listening to this, and you come into and you're coming to Atlanta. Let me start by telling you, you can come to visit. You can't stay. We full. Um, yeah. So, and please forgive me if you see me. Um, we're recording this on on system too. If you see me looking away, the NBA playoffs are going on. We're going to talk about that coming up. But the Dallas Mavericks and uh, the Boston Celtics are playing, and Dallas has gotten back within nine, no ten. Uh, and yeah, yeah. And this is, and so I'm keeping an eye out because. Uh, for New York faithful, an old name is coming up. We're going to talk about that here a little bit more as we come up. Oh, but, yeah. But if you come to Atlanta, we're full. We don't need you to stay. You can come visit. But if you come to Atlanta, uh, I'm going to give you some free advice. There's some places you need to stay away from. Okay. Number one. Chris What's Rock on your gave, list? Gave you the advice out the gate. Every city has a Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. A man who was out about peace. There ain't no peace going on on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. If you ain't oh from there, God. stay away from there. Stay away from there. Uh, number two, we got these boys. They're called the Water Boys. They're sitting right there off the The Water line. Boys. They're, they're going to tell you they're selling a bottle of water, and they take Cash App and Venmo. They're going to oh, cash yeah. app themselves $20,000 for a bottle of water. Don't you give them your phone. Don't you do it. Keep your window did, up. Hey, did it? Did I, uh, or I actually, I think you saw my, uh, I know I posted this on Instagram a long time ago. I went to a Falcons game and I was leaving the game and I saw the two, a guy and a girl with the freaking anaconda snake outside the, yes. uh, the Falcons game. Yes. That's the type of stuff you see in Atlanta. Atlanta outside of a Falcons game, it's man. Atlanta. Understand. I'm going to help you out too. If you're from New York and you're coming down here, don't come down here asking for Pepsi products. This is a Coca-Cola <laughs> city. Hey, hey uh, also, I bet you brought up Pepsi. Uh, did you see uh, Dr. Pepper took over Pepsi as the <laughs> number two uh, consumed uh, soda in the country, huh? I've seen that, and I don't understand. Yeah. Here's, what, here's the only logic that I have with it. Have you seen these okay. people? They, they make, it's called like a dirty soda. They take like soda and put like coffee creamer in it. No, I haven't. It's a whole thing. I mean, I'm not. I'd be open to try it. I, I have you. Have you had that? No, I'm not much of a no. soda drinker. This is how I'm I not my, either. This, but this is how I keep yeah. this beautiful baby soft skin is stay away from the sodas. <laughs> I thought I thought it was all the aloe vera you use, John. Well, I mean, look, <laughs> it ain't easy being beautiful now. <laughs> it's not easy being beautiful. I work hard. Baby, baby, you're the big sexy. 
I look, I, <laughs> hey man, they don't call me Big Daddy for nothing. How you doing? Oh, Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Never mind. I'm a married <laughs> man. I, I'm a married man. That's an old job. That was a young man. Young man. That's the. <laughs> Back in the day. Those days. Those days. Those days are retired. Look, look. Days was a long, long time. Ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, yeah. But, but if you come, hey, if so you come hey, Atlanta, well, yeah. well, do do you like Dr Pepper though? I like Diet Dr. Pepper. I'm not a big fan of okay. regular one. I like Diet Dr. Pepper. I, and I know, Do- okay. you know, people are, the big guy, he likes Diet, so I just don't, I like yeah. Diet Dr. Pepper. I don't know, it's something about right. the taste. Hey, I'm not, whatever you like, man. I'm not, I'm not knocking that. Yeah, it's Diet Dr. Pepper for me. Um, So I get it. But if you come down here, don't come down here asking for a Pepsi. Come, to, It's a Coca-Cola city. They own the city, they run the city. It's a Coca-Cola. Exactly. Well, Matter of fact, that's what we're going to do. Every podcast, we're going to give you tips about coming to Atlanta. And people from Atlanta who says, but you're from New York. You're a New Yorker. I was down here before the Olympics. If y'all haven't indoctrinated oh, me yeah. by now, I'm planting my flag and I'm staying like Columbus. We're, hey, man, at the, at this point, we're, you know, we're natives, man. We've been yep. here for the long haul, man. Yep. You know? I've been we here. See, we, we've seen it all. We've seen uh, twenty-eight to three. We've seen uh, all you know, hey, all man. all you could possibly imagine. You know, I got a world championship ring in the city. That that's a true story, actually, man. How not many people can say that? I got a world championship ring in the city. So that's a true story, man. You know what? Do you have that in your office right now? I, I, we'll talk about that on a later one. That's, that's, that is a whole <laughs> story that we're gonna have to unpack one day. I, did you hey I, did, did you find it in a cracker jack box one day like i said we're going to talk about that one later that is a deep tease that we're going to talk about the world myself and keith Ippolito have world championship rings in the city and we're going to talk about that one maybe we'll do it next week because there ain't gonna be a yeah. whole lot going on the nba final oh might yeah be done. it might be so <laughs> but so shifting gears here a little bit, you're listening to the Shared Stadium podcast. John Radcliffe, Keith Ippolito. Keith, the WNBA has been making some news. Now, the news that it's been making, I hate the fact that everybody's trying to make it negative. But there's the old adage that says there's no such thing as bad press. But it's been mostly about Caitlin Clark. The Indianapolis Fever, Indiana Fever's uh, first round pick rookie. Yeah. It's been about her. Have you gotten a chance to take a look at a game? And what do you think about the flack that Caitlin Clark is getting? I have not watched a game in, in its entirety. I've seen pieces of it and seen, you know, highlights on Sports Center. I feel like what is happening to her is a little bit above what you would call like um i don't want to use hazing but like you know like welcome to the league rookie i feel like it's a little bit more than that and i also uh you know not that i want to agree with pat mcafee or all's def or not the you know definitely not the language he used I, you know if we're, i he does he has a little bit of a point is like you know, if we're being honest here, not that I, you know, want to knock women's sports because I do enjoy women's sports. I like watching women's soccer. I think that's very good. I mean, I, I'm not a regular watcher of the WNBA, you know, solely just from, I guess, from like a, you know, I guess a financial standpoint. Um, I know the league is not profitable, so I would think that the players would, uh, you know, embrace someone like Caitlin Clark coming into the league, especially coming off, um, you know, the national championship game. I believe it was even more watched or similar mm-hmm. clo- or just as co- uh, as watched as the men's uh, championship game. So I would think that they would incur in, you know, embrace that because if anyone was going to help the league flourish and help all all of them make more money, I would think this would be it, no? I think the WNBA is at a transition point, and it's a positive thing. Yeah. Where they're getting more notoriety, yes. more visibility, and I don't think it, I don't think it's, I think Caitlin Clark came in, she was very, 
she made history. She was very, I don't want to say arrogant, but for lack of a better term, arrogant. She she celebrated, and you had Angel Angel Reese from uh, LSU, who's now in Chicago. They tried to make them out to be rivals, and yeah. they weren't rivals. It was just competitive, and I think that's what you're seeing is, I think it's a sport that hasn't gotten the attention for so long. Yeah. And now people are seeing it, and it's they're rivals, and they hate each other, and they're this yeah, and that, yeah. and this and that. And it's like no, it, this has always been there. It's just you're seeing it now for the first time. Yeah, Congratulations! It's the, yeah, it's the com- welcome yeah, to the, the competitive. Yeah, it's the competitive nature between. Because Angel Reese is a is a fantastic player too, but I mean, for whatever reason, you know, Caitlin Clark is. I uh, I guess a brand recognition is. You know, she has all the different endorsement deals and this and that or whatever, but, you know, not diminishing Angel Reese's talent at all. But, yeah, I mean, Caitlin Clark is obviously getting all the attention. Um, so, I, and I, it was even, uh, who was it? Um, uh, the UConn coach, Gino, uh, um, Gino Ariama. Uh, Gino, yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he had a quote, I uh, believe. It was either today or yesterday is basically, you know, kind of more or less saying that it's it's a little bit over the top. Um, the um, uh, what's the uh, the girl who, you know, said uh, uh, Kennedy. Why am I drawing Sinead a blank Kennedy. on her first name? Sinead Kennedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it was a little bit too much. And um, I even saw the clip on. I'm sure you probably saw it too. The Stephen A. Uh, uh, Monica clip. McNutt, Stephen McNutt. And yeah, Stephen yeah, McNutt. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw I that, mean, and you know, I I kind of agree with Stephen A. I mean, he's you know he, uh, you know he's he's the producer of that show, and uh, he chooses who is on that show, and I feel like out of a you know more most of the uh, of of the talent or, you know, the sports talk shows in that format, I feel like he's given the WNBA a, a pretty significant platform. You know, he's got a prime time tot and he's a big name. I don't know what I could understand, I guess maybe a little bit, you know, why would she be upset? But I didn't exactly agree with her attack of him. I feel like he's done a lot for the WNBA and given him all the players, the ex players, a platform. Once again, I bring it to welcome. I liken it to this. We talk about ice hockey here on this show, but for the person who sees ice hockey for the first time, that's such a violent sport. They fight and they this and they lose teeth and they it's so much. They don't hate each other. These are the same guys that when their season's done. They go up to Canada, they go over to Russia, they go over to overseas, and they play on a European team together. The WNBA is the same way where these ladies for years played overseas in Turkey and Istanbul and Russia and China. Yeah, exactly. And they all play together. So you're just getting to the dance. And Stephen A. Smith, he has. I'm not taking anything away from what Stephen A. Smith has done. I think we as a society are just getting there. And because no one gave James Dolan would not be able to pull the garbage that he pulled. I guess it was about six years ago where he shipped the New York Liberty. He kicked them out of Madison Square Garden. He shipped Mm -hmm. them off to Westchester County and they were playing in Westchester. And he did Mm -hmm. it like a thief in the night because he wanted more revenue for the garden. I get it. It's a business that's losing money, but it is also a business that no business opens their doors and day one turns a profit. And I get it. They've been around for quite a long time. But for what these ladies are asking for, they're asking for fair play. They're asking for the visibility. They're, they're not asking for NBA player contracts. But what they're asking for, it's not out of reach. It's not out of reason. I think it's a, if you if you live in a city where you're able to go take in a WNBA game, go take it in. I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it. I think you'll get several things. And I'm not talking about from all oh, these are beautiful, because they are. They're beautiful women. Yeah. But I'm talking about from a standpoint of these are athletic women. These are yep. leaders. 
These are women that, as you can see from whether it be Dawn Stanley, congratulations to her, mm -hmm. leading South Carolina, Nancy Lieberman, who went over and she's not only coached in the NBA, she's a champion over in the big three, uh, ice yeah, yeah. three on three. And she's, and that's a woman leading men. I yeah. Think yeah. Women, I think they can do an outstanding job and I'm enjoying watching. I, I've always watched the WNBA. I'm not now. I don't want to overstate this and, Oh, well, you should know everything. No, I've always watched it. I was young enough. I remember when Lisa Leslie, had the first dunk in the WNBA. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. I, I, I was a Teresa Witherspoon fan. I remember when Dawn Staley, I was, I'm was. i a Dawn Staley fan. I yeah. Was Rebecca Lobo. I go through the history of it. I've always enjoyed oh, yeah, watching yeah. the WNBA. So I'm, I'm happy that they're getting the, the attention they deserve. Yeah, no, I'm definitely happy they're getting the attention deserve. I would, I would say for me... I probably watched more women's college basketball than I did WNBA. So I'm, you know, I would know the players mostly from their college days. And, you know, I don't, I don't know why I, I you know, I haven't really watched much of the WNBA. I, I can't really, it's like, again, you know, not that it's a bad product because I do, I like watching women's soccer. I enjoy watching, you know, the women's world cup. I like watching, um, you know, even some of the women's, uh, soccer game. Like I, I do a, another, um, another podcast I do with another friend about Man United. The women's Man United team has had a, a lot of success, uh, winning basically the, it's called the FA cup. It's, you know, it, yeah. it's just a, you know, a significant trophy over there. So yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy watching all those games, but I, I don't know why it, at least for me, I don't know why it hasn't translated to me watching more WNBA games, and I don't, maybe I sh maybe I should tune in more because I I actually I I did enjoy watching Caitlin Clark play. I think she's a fun player to watch, and even like you know I I'm not gonna sit here and claim I watch every single one of her games or even uh, Angel Reese, but those were any entertaining games. Like they legitimately were good to watch, you know. They are very competitive, which I enjoy. The competition's there. The aggression's there. And I love what they're doing right now is the ladies of the WNBA need to be made almost like NBA players. And what I mean by that is they need to be exclusive. They need to almost be like... If you said if you saw LeBron James at public, you'd be oh my goodness, there's LeBron James. My goodness, there's Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Oh my goodness, there's Luka Doncic, Trey Young. When you hear how much these ladies are making and they don't have the mansions like NBA players where they're living in one bedroom oh, apartments. Yeah, like, think, I about, mean, think about isn't, it like this. Isn't the min like, isn't the minimum salary like eighty or something like I it's like eighty to a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I, okay, I know so. it's not. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a decent salary for like if you know someone was going to pay me eighty grand, of course I'd take that. But compared to what the NBA players and other, it's peanuts on the dollar. But think about it like this: flip it on its head. What's what? Let's let's okay. Let's split the difference. Let's call it ninety five thousand dollars. It's a good yeah. salary. I'm not taking that away from it. Is it a good salary if you live in New York, L.A.? Oh, God, no. Chicago, nope. parts nope. of Atlanta, Miami, nope. Texas, because Washington, D.C., because where, where are these WNBA $100,000 in New York City, you might as well be uh, not poverty, but, I mean, you're not rich. I can tell you that much. I know that. So, And where are – we are wrong about that, too. It's actually – Seventy-seven thousand dollars. Goodness gracious! Oh, really? That's the minimum salary? Wow! That will, based on that, wow, um, wow, and, less than I thought. Actually, yeah, I thought it was closer to one hundred. Wow! And so that's where a lot of these teams are based out of. They're based out of markets that are in big cities that are major cities, and so now you're talking about Atlanta, Dallas, Las Vegas, Chicago, Los Angeles. Seattle, yeah. Washington, New York. 
You're kind of hoping you get drafted by the I'll, Connecticut Sun or the Indiana <laughs> Fever or the Minnesota Lynx. Yeah. No disrespect to those teams. It's just small no. markets and small cities. Exactly. It's the, yeah, cost of living, you yeah. know? It's that purely an economic standpoint. Yes. Now, I, I would I would hope, uh, you know, especially, you know, the marquee players like, uh, you know, Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese, I'm sure they have – other endorsement deals where they're making uh more money than that but yeah if you're just a um uh, the uh the average joe blow and you're uh you're the bottom of the totem pole and you're the, uh, that's that's tough man so very unlike the nba where you know you have players that are you know 10 15 20 million dollars and they're you know they're bench players it's like holy shit man <laughs> And, they're, and you got to remember, they're just getting that. Like, this isn't something, they're just getting these endorsements. They're just getting these shoe deals. Yes. So they're just yeah. getting that. But look, go support the WNBA. The NBA finals are going right, right now. And um, <clears throat> I'm a big fan of this because I'm a married man, so I don't get to say this very often. Didn't I tell y'all? They want these big markets in the finals. They don't want these little bitty markets in the finals. I told y'all. You, you, I, you I, did. I you told did. y'all. They did not want. They didn't want Indiana versus the Utah Jazz. They, you got Ball versus Dallas. They want the big markets. They didn't want the little bitty markets there. But no, and I, I, I don't remember who you are, but I know you're out there. You trolled us. Bro doesn't even know who he's talking about. He doesn't oh, even yeah. remember who said oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Does I kept it? a receipt of that. Who, who, uh, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember that. Remember that. Bro, bro, I can't even remember who's playing in the West, Western Conference Finals. Come on, bro. Yeah, no, I, I kept a receipt of that one because it was Oklahoma City. Yeah. It wasn't worth my time remembering because the NBA yeah, it... wants what they got right now. Dallas, a top 10 market. Boston, a top 10 market. On your TV right now, where you got Luka Doncic, a star, a superstar. Exactly. Kyrie Irving, a polarizing superstar. He and man, I'll tell you what, man, he's been uh, he's really turned it on this year. I mean, uh, like you said, a key word you just said, polarizing. But polarizing. he's been, uh, yeah, he, he he's been he's been pretty damn good this year. You, yep. you know, he's been a polarizing star. And then you go over to Boston, you got Jason Tatum, you got uh, Al Harrington, who everybody loves. And as, you, if, yeah. as we're recording this right now, I'm watching the game. A name that New Yorkers know, you, you probably hated him when he first got there, but you grew to love him. And now he has the chance to possibly win a wing. Win a wing. Try saying that three times fast. Win a, win a, win win a, win. a ring. Christoph Przingis has been throwing the ball all over the court, and it is it, it's fun to watch this guy play because I know everybody will say, "No, I was always a Przingis fan." No, you weren't. You didn't even know who he was. We couldn't even say no. his name the first year. Exactly. It's like uh, Christoph names you can't say. Remember when the Knicks drafted that uh, French guy, uh, Frank Nilla. Kina. I can't even say sorry. Yeah, sorry. That brain. Yeah, my brain just goes to random places sometimes. But yeah, Chris Tops. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, you know, I. You know, he. He was what he was. I mean, I don't. I don't really hate him. I don't really. I. You know, he's doing his thing. I could really care less what he does over there. No, it, he uh, wasn't a bad Nick. It was. No, he got a chance to see the dumpster fire that was that organization at that point in time. Exactly. And he wanted out, and we were hurt well, yeah. because he was supposed to be our big star. And yeah, then he, was, he was injured I, all the time too, so it didn't help. Yeah, he was injured all the time. You know, we went through the the Phil Jackson years, and you know, the resurrection of the Triangle. You know, we could go on and on with the you know the history of the Knicks of the last twenty plus years. So yeah, I, I, you know, it is what it is. I personally, I could really. I don't have any ill will towards them. I mean, you know, I I hate the freaking Celtics. I I would I, I'm definitely pulling for the Mavs. I'm sure you are too. I yeah, I definitely am pulling for the Mavs. I I don't know about you. I, well, I I maybe just because a friend I hang out with, he he's a big Minnesota fan, and he was 
he was shitting on Luca pretty hard as far as like, you know, you basically can't touch him, you know, you can't foul him or whatever, whatever, you know, I, you know, he's a star. I don't know. Get, I, uh, for me personally, I say give him the calls. That's just me, though. You might as well tell your friend to stop watching the NBA. Because <laughs> you can't touch LeBron. You can't of touch course. Trey Young. You can't touch Dre, James Harden. You can't touch Draymond Green. You can't, I mean, stop it. Look, I want Luka yeah. Doncic to win. And I'm, uh, yeah, I'll bet against people, Matt. Um, I want Luka Doncic to win because the Atlanta Hawks could have had her. And you traded them away for Trey Young. And Trey yeah, Young might exactly. not even be here in a year. And I, I, I'm pretty sure we can say that that was a gigantic mistake at this point. And I, yeah, if you're a if you're a Hawks fan, uh, yes, give me Luka Doncic over Trey Young nine out of ten times. I mean, Luka is he's a freak, man. I don't think I think it was the same scenario like what the Knicks had. The Knicks drafted Kristaps Porzingis and. Fans didn't know what to make of them. The Hawks drafted. Uh, they made the trade. They said they take uh, Luka Doncic straight for Trey Young. No one knew what Luka Doncic was. He was a kid from overseas. Of and course. Then now, now here's what you got. And Trey's a good player. I'm not taking that away from it. It's just one of those moments that I think you got to be careful about propping people up on a pedestal too soon to say, oh, yes. Trey is great because he can shoot from half court. Great. Good for you. Well, I, I think it, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't want it to sound like I'm knocking his ability because I think he is a good player, but is, you know, I don't know if he's Luca, Luca, or also plus you know all the other you know the different articles, whether it was the athletic article a few years ago or other different things about just being bad in the locker room and players not liking him or whatever. And I, you know, I I think that for me at least factors into the equation as well. I like Trey as a player. I. I haven't seen his game evolve a whole lot yet. He's evolved some, but also yes. I want to see him become a leader, and I haven't seen that yet. And I could just be asking mm -hmm. for too much, but I, I'd yeah, like to see yeah. him become a leader. I'd like him to well, see that, him become much more. Well, that like to your point about being a leader, I was like, do you believe Trey Young is the player that wins the Hawks a uh, an NBA championship? He can, and here's why I say he can. When okay. uh, I can't remember what the GM's name now, uh, Schneider. Uh, Schneider. Dan, yeah, yeah. He uh, came from. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Came from he, uh, Golden State. State. He won, yes. He was trying to make the Golden State Warriors of the East Coast, and that was, i.e., Trey Young was supposed to be Steph Curry 2.0. Steph Curry carried his team to a championship. So I think Trey Young could do just that. It's just there has to be some more pieces there, and all of those pieces haven't fallen into place yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're not, yeah, I guess you're not wrong from that standpoint. I mean, he he definitely has the talent. Um yeah, I guess it's just like you just just putting the the final pieces of the puzzle around him. Um, so. One thing I, I saw this, um, a little, throw a little gambling uh, at you for the NBA Finals. I saw this and I was a little tempted. I, I don't know where I saw that. Maybe, I think it was Sports Center before I went to bed last night. Uh, and they were talking about uh, MVP Finals or who uh, M uh, predictions to be the MVP in the NBA Finals. And uh, a name that came up that someone said they were going to throw a flyer on. Uh, Al Al Horford at three hundred to one. Would you put five hundred or not five hundred? Yeah, would you put five dollars on Al Horford to be the NBA MVP at three hundred to one, John? Hell no. Look, I like <laughs> Al Horford, but Al Horford, I do too. <laughs> Al Horford's MVP days. <laughs> It's like our college days. It's way in the rearview mirror. It's a hell yeah. Like okay, like, like and I and I like Al Horford. I think Al, I hated to see him leave Atlanta. 
I know he yeah. played for the Florida Gators, and I'm not a Florida Gators fan. But <laughs> actually, I don't even know this. Who is your college team, Don? John? Do you have one? Go dogs! Sick them. Go. Okay. All right. All right. I, I didn't. I just. I wanted to confirm. Al Horford's played 28 minutes. He's got 10 points. To the flip side of that coin, Christoph Porzingis, coming off the bench, has played 21 minutes and has 20 points. Uh, mm-hmm. Jalen Brown is leading the pick, leading the Celtics with 22 points, and Luka Doncic mm-hmm. is leading the Mavericks with 30. If Al Horford gets MVP, that means Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, Christoph Porzingis have all gone down hurt, and he somehow has put this team on his back with his bad back and his bad knees to win a championship, and it would be the most miraculous thing I've ever seen in my life. Hey, that would be something. How the, how old is he now? Sir, and I'll say it, I... I yeah, I mean he's he's got to be up there, man. God, I I mean he's been in the league for yeah. God, he's, he's been in the league forever. Has to I be, mean yeah. Is, he got drafted in two thousand seven. God Almighty, was it that long ago? Jeez, <laughs> Jesus. So, um, all right. Before we wrap it up, so everybody's concerned about Tiger, El Tigre, <laughs> El Tigre. <laughs> Evidently, Tiger Woods was spotted in Las Vegas, and he looked to have put on a few drinks. Looks to have had a few. He looked a little disheveled, according to the picture that I saw. Allegedly. That's, I don't yeah, want, that's I don't want, allegedly. I mean, so, I mean, Tiger, let's be honest. We're like the fourth or fifth episode in on this podcast. What are you suing us for? Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. Hey, I mean, first of all, at least for me personally, what are you going to take? I, I don't have much to take. And either... <laughs> See, dog Funko Pop. That's the guy. You got to st- oh, oh, all right. All right. Got, got the gin and juice Funko Pop. All right. Well, I, I, oh, maybe you got, some, I know you're a big comic book guy, so maybe you got some cool ass Marvel comic books. <laughs> yeah, boy. Don't be, don't be dry snitching on here, man. Damn, dog. Nah. Um, <laughs> look, t- uh, it's, it's no secret. <laughs> The man has worked hard his entire life to become one of the, if not the greatest golfer that we have ever seen. Of course. That pressure gets to you. And if you don't have the right people around you to say, hey, chill. Hey, let's go home. I, I was listening to um, a podcast and Shaquille O'Neal was on there. And Shaq says he never drinks in public. And they said, why? He said, because when I made it to the league, my dad looked at me and said, hey, and said, hey, don't mess up your mama's money. Tiger Woods isn't messing up anybody's money because yeah. he, you know, he's divorced. The kids yeah. are set for life. So yeah, he's, yeah. he has no direction right now yeah, to say, yeah. hey, chill. And he yeah, needs- exactly. He doesn't have that uh, person, I guess, to right the ship or yeah. bring him back to earth, I guess. Yep. And so I think that's what he's dealing with, unfortunately. He has that right to, but I hope he's healthy. I hope he's I, I do too. Himself. Yeah. And I hope he's someone that, much like I spoke of with like the WNBA, that he's that a lord that we get to see like the masters there's tiger oh and he dude looks good. I, dude i and i'm i'm not a gigantic golf fan i mean but if there's probably really at least for me is like two golfers that if i hear that you know it's you know the going into the 16th or 17th on the u.s open or the masters or whatever it's pretty much only tiger woods and Phil Mickelson for I'll I'll tune in for that if I know it's close and I not that the other golfers aren't great because they're all you know Scotty Scheffler and all these other guys they're all tremendous talents but Scotty (laughs) Scheffler yeah I wonder I heard all his case got thrown out now right it it was an to me one man's opinion 
one man's opinion. You're right. Everything got thrown out. I was an overzealous cop. Leave him alone. Oh yeah, it yeah. Was an overzealous I, cop. I yeah. You saw the. I saw the video. I'm sure you saw it too. Yes. I, uh, according to police report that I read, it the officer said he was dragged by a car. Uh, what were you dragged by, bro? Because that's not what I saw in the video. It was an overzealous cop that was like, ooh. I can make news. I can be a big shot when really and truly, bro, sit down. You could have just chilled exactly. out. Exactly. You, you went too hey, far. Uh, uh, so, or uh, back to Tiger Woods. So I was, I'm looking at his photos again from uh, this video again. You know what came to my mind, especially this one photo? It reminded me, um, you remember that movie Hitch with Will Smith? Yeah. Uh, it remi this picture reminds me of when Will Smith is eating the sushi or the fish out on the date, and he gets allergic, and he has to take the Benadryl to face. That's what this photo reminds me of. No, I, look, I hope Tiger's <laughs> doing well. But now, also, here, here's the part that I'm going that I think everybody's forgetting. I've been there. You've been there. What happens there stays there. The man's in Vegas. Dude. What happens well, in Vegas the minute you walk into one of these sports books? They shove a drink in your hand, and it's Tiger Woods, the $100 million man. What do you think they would do? Million, him uh, chicken wings? Uh, $100 million. Uh, Hundred million. I mean, this guy, he's got... He's, even after the divorce, he's still got to be a billionaire, no? I don't think he broke a billion, but I think he's... Did well, he not? No? I don't think he broke a billion. He had to be close, no? Yeah, okay, let's look. Now I gotta look at now, uh, what, 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 what's the, uh, what was the game on the, uh, on our, our former colleague uh, show, Chuck and Chernoff and Nick and Cellini? I'm or Cellini and Domino? Nope. See, celebrity, you... celebrity net worth? <laughs> See, when David Dickey sends you a cease and desist, I don't want to hear nothing. Uh, actually, I stand oh. corrected. As of 2024, he was 1.3 billion. I stand corrected. I thought I see. I thought so. I thought so, man. I thought so. Either way, look. Hey, the, uh, the man's hey, out uh, in Vegas. Uh, you know, back to uh, cease and desist. May, should we uh, change our podcast name to uh, the front row? With that, we're gonna wrap this one up. Uh, this is the Shared Stadium Podcast. <laughs> it will not become the front row. It is the Shared Stadium Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Like, subscribe, follow wherever you get your podcast. If we get any cease and desist, it has been a pleasure working with, talking to you guys. Um, you can follow, Send follow them to us. the Radcliffe residence. You can follow us on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. Because Keith Ippolito has clearly woke up this morning and chose violence. And that means we might have to get a new name for this show. Um, so if we change, if this goes away... I hear Atlanta Eats is already taken. I hear the audio oh, fun God. bag is already taken. I hear um, the front row is allegedly already taken. You know, unfortunately, we can't just be some normal guys. I can't say the name because I know that name is taken. Uh, we, can't be, we can't be them. Um, Dude, we're going on. Uh, we're going down the down the hole, the rabbit ooh, hole. Ooh, but we can. <laughs> change it to the move that is finished the move that is finished oh. all right, all right. and y'all can look right. that one up i was a part of that. see so we're gonna wrap it up before we get in trouble john rat keith <laughs> ippolito man this was crazy y'all have a good night we'll talk to you guys hopefully by the time we come back the nba playoffs will be done uh the giants they should be headed in otas uh keith ippolito will have run the lyrics to Darren Waller's breakup song from Kelsey Plumley. And... I think on our next episode I'll have to maybe uh rap a verse from that song, right? I will not be here for that episode. Good night everybody. <laughs> Talk to you next time. <laughs>